in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Spirit Prayer of St. Augustine Breathe in me, O Holy Spirit, that my thoughts may all be holy. Act in me, O Holy Spirit, that my work, too, may be holy. Draw my heart, O Holy Spirit, that I love but what is holy. Strengthen me, O Holy Spirit, to defend all that is holy. Guard me, then, O Holy Spirit, that I always may be holy. Amen. Hi students, as I welcome you to this session, let us thank the Almighty for the gift of new life and the gift of this new day. Dear Lord, I thank you for the gift of my life and giving me more opportunities to deepen my faith in you. Before we begin the session, let us discuss upon the two virtues, loyalty and faithfulness. Loyalty and faithfulness are the words which we often use in our day-to-day -day life. We hear our teachers, parents, friends, elders, priests, nuns, all keep telling us, be faithful, be loyal. Therefore, faithfulness and loyalty are not something new for you. So at this juncture, I would like to ask you about it. What is your understanding on the virtues of loyalty and faithfulness? Take 10 seconds, reflect for a while and write your thoughts in your notebook. Loyalty runs on sacrifices. Those that cannot make sacrifices cannot be loyal to anybody. Loyalty, a will, a decision, a resolution of the soul. As we have centered our thoughts on loyalty, we shall now focus our attention on our Blessed Mother who is the model of loyalty. Mary's loyalty propels us to see in her a teacher of faith. Every aspect of faith in Christian life finds its prototype in Mary. Her complete trust in God's faithfulness and in His promises never wavers, even when the Lord's words were difficult or apparently impossible to accept. Therefore, if our faith is weak, we should turn to Mary. Amid the darkness of the cross, Our Lady's faith and her example yields an unexpected fruit. Jesus gives us His Mother as our Mother. He places us under her care and offers us in her intercession. Therefore, the Church constantly invites the faithful to turn with particular devotion to Mary. Our Mother is a model of faith. By faith, Mary accepted the angel's word and believed the message that she was to become the Mother of God in the obedience of her devotion. Today, I shall take you to the land of our Blessed Mother to experience her blessedness as I unfold the topic of the day, Mary the model of loyalty. Let us reflect upon various instances from the life of our Blessed Mother and experience more deeply Mary as the model of loyalty. Let us go to Nazareth. The name of Nazareth is known as Flower of Galilee, as Saint Jerome called it. Here in this place, the angel Gabriel 
announced the birth of Jesus. Let us watch our blessed mother and witness her encounter with God's messenger. Above all, we shall see how our blessed mother responds to God's will. Hail, thou that art highly favoured, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favour with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. How shall this be, seeing that I know not a man? The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the Highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that Holy Child, which shall be born of thee, shall be called the Son of God. And behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who is called barren. For with God, nothing is impossible. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. Mary's famous response to the angel Gabriel, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be done to me according to thy word. This response is a striking example of Mary's courageous loyalty. Mary's legendary submission to God's will for her life did not spare her of the pain and the shame associated with her radical faithfulness. It was not easy for Mary at that time of period in Jewish society where a woman becomes pregnant. She is considered as an adulteress and was stoned to death. Therefore. The task was not easy for Mary. She would be ostracized from the society, being an unwed mother, and Joseph could have disowned her. I am sure many people in the town must have rolled up their eyes and thought, pregnant by God? Like Mary, with our own yes to God's voice in our lives, we are also asked to nurture the word of God within us and bring Christ into the world in our own situations and in our own ways. Using our talents and graces, we are called to bring Christ into the lives of others. Can you face the sneering crowd and live a life that follows in the way of God? Mary said yes to God. She kept saying yes to God. One yes opened the door to hope. Hope in salvation. Hope for life after death. Hope for us. Her yes changed her life in an instant and changed our lives forever. Prayer is ultimately self-giving in response to God's love. If we say yes as Mary did, God has the opportunity to lead His life in our life.
Loyalty is the first law of God. Sometimes we are quick to abandon our loyalties when little pressure is applied. A child may be quick to abandon the authority of a loving parent. But remember, faithfulness and loyalty is not an option in a relationship. It's a priority if it must work. Let us look at our blessed mother and learn the lessons of loyalty which can withstand all odds of life and stand firm in our faith. Now we are all set to go to Judea. Come on, let us accompany our blessed mother to the hill country of Judea. And no sooner has the angel departed, she rose and went with haste to her cousin Elizabeth. She obeys quickly, loyal to God and to his messenger. She is teachable, responsive to God's leading, loyal to his command. She moves quickly in obedience and faith. Upon hearing the angel Gabriel, Mary knew her cousin needed her the most. Mary traveled a long distance, risked herself and the most important baby in the world. It is because Mary's love for others and her humble submission to the will of God. What do we learn from this loyal response of Mary in her act of visitation? Let us relive the moments of Mary in her story of visitation. Mary's Magnificat provides a clarion call which focuses not only on the deficits of our own life experiences but on the greatness of God's heart. Oh 
has filled the hungry with good things and the rich are empty my soul The radiance of God's glory surrounded the earth. Let us go to the city of David and there you will recognize the Savior born in Bethlehem. Christmas is the story of Mary. a young unwed mother giving birth to a refugee child jesus in a sheep bed the central male character in the story is joseph who supports her decision to give birth to a child that he is not the biological father of here in the christmas story god's divine plan works itself out in the faithful obedient submissive response of mary and joseph as they obediently respond by doing what the angels tell them to do god's servants surrendering to god's direction brings them and us to the place where the christ child is born you have to be so utterly impressed with this young couple before they are married Angels appear to both of them independently. They respond positively, agree to stay together and parent a child that is not of their marriage. They provide for us a powerful example of what it means to follow God. Sometimes loyalty and love cost us more than we can imagine but loyalty strengthens the heart and advent is the perfect season to receive a holy strengthening loyalty is a foundation stone of advent devotion like mary we wait in advent we wait for the return of christ we prepare the way of the lord and as we wait He strengthens the heart. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord.
there were months of quiet work and hardship spent with the nostalgia for their homeland but also with the joy of seeing jesus growing up healthy and strong all around them there there they saw numerous signs of idolatry all the strange egyptian gods with the faces of beast but mary knew that jesus had come into the world to save those people as well and that they too were destined for redemption and so mary embraced them in her maternal heart Maria. we can learn from mary's example to us she portrays a lesson of loyalty for us she moves quickly in obedience and faith her first loyalty to her creator the lord of heaven and earth he leads her through her husband a faithful man himself loyalty and faithfulness are rewarded and blessed are at the Jerusalem temple see mary and joseph there they have come to present jesus at the temple because according to the law of moses every first born male was to be brought into the temple to be dedicated to god on the 40th day after the birth even though this is a joyful occasion you can see in the words of simeon a foreshadow of the sorrows that will be shared between jesus and his mother mary mary suffered with jesus from the beginning to the end a faithful and a loyal follower of god At Cana the blessed virgin once again showed her total availability to God Mary's faithfulness and loyal submission to God's will made her to believe in Jesus before seeing him here her trust in Jesus before he revealed his divine power we ask Mary to be our gracious advocate before God do whatever he tells you Mary interceded and pleaded before Jesus to turn the situation around it was not just then Mary intervened in Cana she continues to plead before God on our behalf now when difficulties and disappointments creeps into our lives Let us turn to our blessed mother who is full of grace who then intercedes for us to Christ the God of all grace this is a wonderful picture of intercession the queen of heaven is carrying on even now as we pray our rosaries or embrace such devotional practices to Mary our mother
前走。The same fate that Mary had at the birth of her son was the one she had at the cross. It required much faith to have in her arms that defenseless baby and to put him in the manger and believe that he was the God man. It also required much faith to see her son totally disfigured and defenseless on the cross. waiting for him to be placed in her arms to then be put in the sepulcher her faith allowed her to continue to believe that regardless of what appeared to be he was the god man at the cross when it was in fact jesus's hour Mary's faith and intercession now manifested in silence also witnessed the outpouring of the new wine the blood of her son being shed for our salvation to quench our thirst for God and his divine life Mary's faithfulness and loyalty is a model for the church just like Mary the church has her own itinerary and her own journey to travel it is mary's faith that will teach the church to be faithful undivided perseverant and trustful in times of glory and in times of suffering Let us pray for all the mothers who have survived to their own children. Let us pray especially for those parents who cannot cradle and truly mourn their own children who have died from the coronavirus. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. Present in the upper room, she passed on to the church of all times her intimate memories of Jesus as an irreplaceable witness of the birth and hidden life of Jesus. Mary guarantees the true humanity of the Son of God, who by the power of the Holy Spirit was made flesh in her flesh. Mary prays with the first community. She, the teacher of prayer, always docile to the soft voice of the Paraclete. teaches the disciples to be confident in awaiting the gift 
that comes from the Most High. The Spirit promised by Jesus as a fruit of His death and resurrection. She so emptied herself and so full of love for God's will that the Holy Spirit is pleased to continuously pour out graces on her soul and attend her prayers for the early church. As we have reflected upon the life of our Blessed Mother, who stand as a model of loyalty, let us once again summarize the entire session and cherish our Blessed Mother, the Mother of Jesus and our Mother.
we pray now for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. 